Okay, so the Scouring of the Shire. For people who haven't read the book, you may have heard about this chapter, but you might not really know what it involves, so let me explain. When the Hobbits return to the Shire, they find that all is not well. The Shire is under rough management ever since Lotho Sackville Baggins started calling himself the Chief. But since the Hobbits just saved all of Middle-earth, they are well equipped to handle this threat. They quickly dispose of ruffians who had caused them trouble in their more innocent days, including Bill Fernie. They're arrested, technically, but the Hobbits end up bossing around their captors more than the other way around. They find that the Shire has been devastated with ugly houses built and trees chopped down willy-nilly. They encounter some human ruffians from Isengard who tell them that Lotho answers to someone named Sharky. The ruffians try to mock and intimidate the Hobbits, but they don't expect the Hobbits to stand up to them, swords at the ready, so the ruffians just run away. The four Hobbits decide to get all the good oppressed Hobbits of the Shire together to overthrow their oppressors. Sam goes to recruit old farmer Tom Cotton, and he's like, hell yeah, finally, let's do this. And Tom's daughter Rosie is all like, go get him, Sam, and may I add, damn, you're looking fine. And the gang has gathered a hundred hobbits to fight, all of whom have been wanting to stand up to the Chief and Sharky, but none of whom had the courage to get things started on their own. Basically, the hobbits unionize the Shire. When the cops arrive to break this militia up, half of the cops are like, screw this, we're joining you, let's take down those bastards. And the rest of the cops just leave. They scram so fast you'd think their supervisors told them to start considering public health. Farmer Cotton mentions that the only hobbits who haven't been taken over are the Tooks because those Tooks fight back. So Pippin goes to recruit his kin to the cause. Then the ruffians come back, so the hobbit militia hides. The ruffians try to arrest Farmer Cotton, and the militia ambushes them like Ewoks. Mary's all like, get out of here. And the leader of the ruffians is like, whatever, we can take these pipsqueaks. He goes to attack Mary, and the ruffian leader is immediately shot dead by four hobbit arrows. The other ruffians surrender. Cotton then tells them more about what's been going on, including that Lotho's own mother Lobelia was arrested by Sharky's men. Sam finds his father, the gaffer, and Frodo tells the gaffer all about Sam's great deeds and newfound fame, which Rosie Cotton is very interested to hear. The Tooks arrive, more ruffians arrive, the Battle of Bywater breaks out. It's bloody. The Hobbits win, but not without some casualties. But don't worry, no named characters are killed. Frodo is the only one who never draws his sword, and indeed, basically he spends the entire battle reminding the other citizens not to kill enemies who have surrendered. Apparently the hobbits have awakened their own bloodlust. The hobbits decide it's time they went to the big boss, and on their way they see that the party tree has been cut down, which is the final straw for Sam. The four hobbits go into Bag End, which is in shambles, and they discover Sharky there. Turns out, it's Saruman. Saruman got his revenge for the destruction of Orthanc by trying to destroy the Shire. As much as the hobbits are angry about the damage he's done, they mostly just think he's pathetic. This is what the Great White Wizard has been reduced to? Taking out petty revenge on the least threatening corner of Middle-earth? Frodo insists that nobody kill him, that they just let him go and lead the rest of his sad life. Saruman repays this by trying to stab Frodo, but he's wearing the mithril, and Frodo's still like, spare him, hopefully he can get the help he needs. And this pisses Saruman off. Saruman starts to leave with Wormtongue, but Frodo says to Wormtongue, hey, you don't need to follow him, as far as I know you haven't wronged us. And Saruman's all like, ha ha ha, Wormtongue killed Lotho, he might have even eaten him too. Saruman just keeps taunting Wormtongue, and then Wormtongue's had enough, and he slashes Saruman's throat. But before he can escape, he's shot dead by hobbit arrows. A dark mist rises from Saruman's body for a moment, but it dissipates and the body shrivels up. Then the hobbits begin cleaning up, they release everyone from jail, and Lobelia's shocked that people are happy to see her. But she's heartbroken at Lotho's death, and she becomes a new woman, giving Bag End back to Frodo and leaving her wealth to help the oppressed hobbits recover. As for the four hobbits, they lead the various parts of cleanup. Merry and Pippin, being great warriors of Rohan and Gondor, drive out any remaining ruffians. Sam replants trees with special soil he got from Galadriel, and he plants a Malorn tree where the party tree was. Frodo becomes deputy mayor and defunds the police. Then Sam marries Rosie, and they move into Bag End with Frodo until it's time for Frodo to leave Middle-earth.